Welcome to our channel. This is Book 2 of 100 in our Ancient Mysteries series. Throughout history, there have been numerous mysteries that have baffled historians and archaeologists alike. These mysteries often arise after the discovery of artifacts or ruins that contradict established theories concerning historical timelines, technological capabilities, or cultural contexts. Such discoveries challenge conventional wisdom and force scholars to question their assumptions about the past. However, the focus of this investigation is unique in that we will be examining knowledge rather than a physical object. Through rigorous research and analysis, we aim to uncover new insights into the mysterious nature of this knowledge and how it has evolved over time. Many isolated tribes across the world have passed down fascinating tales about the arrival of gods on earth, their creation of humanity, and their imparting of wisdom to their adopted people. According to these accounts, these divine beings often descend from the sky in fantastical sounding craft, leaving witnesses in a state of awe and wonder. While these stories are prevalent in many parts of the world, some of the most intriguing tales come from the reclusive tribes of Africa. Despite the fantastical nature of these stories, many people wonder if there could be a grain of truth to these ancient legends. Suppose we told you that one of these tribes has obtained an unmatched understanding of the stars, planets, and celestial objects without relying on modern equipment like telescopes. Amazingly, this tribe's knowledge of the cosmos is so profound that it outstrips even the most advanced modern technology. How would you explain this remarkable and intriguing phenomenon? Our journey takes us to the Bandiagra Escarpment, an imposing sandstone cliff that spans over 150 kilometers in central Mali, West Africa. This awe-inspiring landscape is known for its beautiful rock formations, deep gorges, and unique wildlife, including baboons, hyenas, and various bird species. The Dogon tribe has made this location their home for centuries, adapting to the challenging terrain by constructing their homes and storage facilities directly into the cliffs. These dwellings not only provide natural protection but have also become a defining feature of the landscape. A total of 289 Dogon villages are spread out across three natural regions, namely, the sandstone plateau, the escarpment, and the plains. For centuries, the Dogon people have been living in the rugged terrain of the Bandiagra escarpment without the luxury of electricity or indoor plumbing. Despite the lack of modern amenities, they have managed to thrive in this challenging environment through their resourcefulness and strong community bonds. Not even the rugged terrain has affected the Dogon. They practice terrace farming on the plateau above the escarpment, growing millet, sorghum, and other crops using traditional agricultural methods. Rearing livestock, such as goats and chickens, is also common among the Dogon. The term, Dogon, is thought to have been derived from the Songhai language and means, inhabitants of the cliffs, or, people of the cliff. The historical development of the Songhai language is intricately tied to the history and cultural evolution of the Songhai people. The Songhai Empire, one of the great medieval empires in West Africa, reached its height during the 15th and 16th centuries. However, the language likely has deep historical roots that extend well before the establishment of the empire. The Dogon people have a unique worldview that is centered around their cosmology, which includes a belief in a complex system of gods, each with their own special powers and attributes. One of the most significant of these deities is Ama, the supreme god of Dogon cosmology. Ama is associated with creating the universe, including celestial bodies and the earth. He is considered to be an uncreated and unknowable force, existing beyond the reach of direct human interaction. It is said that Ama gave shape and movement to the world and created living creatures, including humans. The Dogon people believe fish-like beings, known as the Nomo, act as intermediaries between Ama and humanity. According to the myth of Ama, there are many other Earths out there, each with its own unique forms of life. For example, it is believed that on the third earth, there are men with horns, while on the fifth earth, there are men with tails, and on the sixth earth, there are men with wings, and so on. Another noteworthy deity in Dogon mythology is Lieb, the god of earth and fertility. Lieb is often associated with the natural world and is believed to be a key force in maintaining its balance and harmony. 
The Dogon believe that Lieb is responsible for ensuring agricultural prosperity and is connected to the cycles of planting and harvesting. Urugu is another significant deity in Dogon mythology, but unlike Ama, he is a malevolent figure associated with disorder and chaos. The Dogon tell stories of Urugu's defiance and rebellion against the other gods, which eventually led to his separation from the Nomo. Throughout human history, serpents have played a significant role in shaping mythologies and religious traditions across the world. One of the most notable examples is from Hindu mythology, which references the Nagas, half-human and half-snake creatures. These powerful entities are often associated with bodies of water and are sometimes worshipped as protective deities. In addition, Quetzalcoatl, a major deity in Aztec and other Mesoamerican cultures, is often depicted as a serpent. He is associated with creation, fertility, and the arts and is revered for his wisdom and power. Another serpent deity that has played a prominent role in ancient mythology is Apep, also known as Apophis, in ancient Egyptian mythology. Apep is often depicted as a giant serpent or dragon trying to devour the sun god Ra. This fierce creature is associated with chaos and darkness and is considered to be one of the greatest enemies of the gods. The Dogon also venerate serpents, and serpent imagery is present in much of their art. One of their most significant deities is Binu, a serpent deity who is associated with healing and protection. The Dogon people believe that Binu has the power to ward off evil spirits and safeguard the community from harm. Due to his vital role in their belief system, Binu is often invoked during important rituals and ceremonies. The symbolism and significance of serpent-like beings in ancient cultures have been the subject of numerous interpretations and debates, and their prevalence throughout history remains a mystery to this day. The Dogon people are known for their rich cultural heritage, which comprises a complex social structure. Their villages are usually made up of several compounds, each housing an extended family or lineage. These compounds are made up of multiple interconnected huts or buildings and are designed to accommodate the needs of the family or lineage. It's worth noting that these villages are typically autonomous units, which means that they make decisions at the local level. While there may be some overarching cultural and religious practices shared by all Dogon, each village has its own unique traditions and rituals that may differ from those of other villages. While some villages have embraced Islam or Christianity, a significant proportion of the Dogon population identify as animists. Their animistic faith is centered on the belief in the interconnectedness of the spiritual world of gods and ancestors and the physical world of plants, animals, and humans. They believe in the existence of a universal life force that binds everything together. This life force is thought to be present in all living things, including the natural world, and is believed to be the source of their power and vitality. This decentralized decision-making is a key aspect of Dogon culture. It is designed to ensure that each village can address its specific needs and concerns in a way that is appropriate and effective. It also allows for a great deal of diversity, as each village is free to express its own unique identity and traditions. The Dogon people are recognized for their distinctive architectural style, which is primarily characterized by the use of mud-brick houses with thatched roofs. These houses are arranged in circular or rectangular formations, forming compounds that are integral to the Dogon way of life. The granaries constructed by the Dogon are also noteworthy, as they feature unique conical or cylindrical shapes that are unlike any other in the region. These granaries hold great spiritual and symbolic significance for the Dogon, as they represent the connection between the people and their ancestors, as well as their agricultural practices. The granaries are often decorated with intricate carvings and designs that further emphasize their significance to the Dogon culture. For the Dogon, ancestors are not just mere historical figures. Instead, they are believed to continue to exist in a spiritual form and are considered vital intermediaries between the living and the divine. Ancestor veneration is a central aspect of Dogon religious practices, and it is deeply ingrained in the culture and traditions of the community. Diadiambo plays a vital role in this spiritual realm. He is believed to guide the souls of the departed to the afterlife and is honored in various rituals and ceremonies throughout the year. In many Dogon households, dedicated spaces, such as ancestor altars, 
serve as a point of connection between the living and their deceased family members. These altars are often adorned with symbolic items, such as statues, carvings, and other artifacts, that are meant to honor and please the spirits of the ancestors. Offerings of food, drink, and other prized items are also made at these altars to nourish and sustain the souls of the ancestors. The Dogon believe that the dead must be properly guided to the afterlife and that this is a crucial responsibility of the living. They have elaborate rituals that involve specific ceremonies designed to steer the spirit of the deceased to the afterlife. These rituals are meant to ensure a smooth transition for the departed soul and to maintain a positive relationship between the living and the dead. The members of the society are highly skilled in carrying out these rites, and they are expected to do so with the utmost respect and dignity. The Dogon believe that the spirits of the ancestors can offer protection from evil spirits, bring good fortune, and offer guidance during difficult times. Therefore, ancestor veneration remains an important aspect of Dogon religious and cultural practices. Dogon priests, known as Hagans, hold a revered position within the Dogon community. The Hogan serves as the spiritual leader, acting as a conduit between the earthly realm and the spirit world. Embodying a unique blend of hereditary and spiritual qualifications, the Hogan is selected based on a combination of familial lineage and perceived spiritual qualities. Once chosen, the Hogan becomes the custodian of the Dogon's sacred knowledge, traditions, and cosmology, playing a pivotal role in preserving the community's cultural and religious heritage. Living in isolation within a designated area known as the Hogan's House, Hagen's lead lives focused on purity and spiritual dedication. Their responsibilities encompass the guidance of religious rituals, ceremonies, and festivals, including those tied to agricultural cycles and initiation rites. Hagen's are skilled practitioners of divination, employing methods such as throwing divination objects to seek guidance from the spiritual realm. Their revered status extends beyond spiritual matters, as they are also sought for advice on community welfare dispute resolution, and agricultural practices. Dogon art, including wooden masks and sculptures, is highly regarded for its intricate designs, which are often used in religious ceremonies and other social events. The masks are considered priceless works of art and are highly valued by collectors and art enthusiasts worldwide. They are believed to possess spiritual powers and are regarded as protectors of the community. The meaning behind them is not static it can evolve over time, with spiritual beliefs, cultural practices, and community cohesion playing a significant role. They are created with meticulous attention to detail, reflecting the Dogon people's cosmological beliefs. Certain masks are closely tied to secret societies and initiation ceremonies. These secret societies play a significant role in the social and spiritual life of the Dogon people, and their practices are often kept confidential and limited to initiated members. These masks are considered priceless works of art and are highly valued by collectors and art enthusiasts worldwide. Just as baffling as their masks are their ancient sculptures, some of which depict figures described as men with wings and bizarre lizard-like figures without limb joints. They are believed to represent ancestors or spiritual beings associated with Sirius. These men with wings are notably similar to the winged genies of ancient Samaria who were typically depicted with enormous wings, human heads, and bodies and often wearing horned crowns. One of these sculptures even showed up thousands of miles away in Ecuador in the Father Crespi collection. Quite how it got there is anyone's guess. Throughout history, winged genies have been associated with the ability to fly. This belief is supported by numerous references to flight in ancient texts. These winged beings are often depicted with bird-like features such as feathers, wings, and beaks, further emphasizing their association with flight. Some cultures even believed that these genies possessed magical powers that allowed them to enter and exit our world at will. The cave art of the Dogon people is another significant aspect of their cultural heritage, offering valuable insights into their history, beliefs, and artistic expression. The cave art, which is spread across the cliffs of their ancestral lands, depicts a wide range of subjects, including humans, animals, plants, and geometric patterns. It is believed to date back to different periods, ranging from centuries to several millennia, 
and is thought to have been created for various purposes, such as religious rituals, storytelling, and record keeping. The intricate designs and vivid colors used in the cave art reflect the Dogon people's deep reverence for their culture and history, making it a valuable source of knowledge for archaeologists, anthropologists, and historians alike. Many of the images are believed to represent deities, spirits, or mythological beings from Dogon cosmology and are viewed as sacred by the community. The paintings are incredibly detailed and show a high level of creativity and artistic skill. Each image is carefully crafted, using a combination of colors, lines, and shapes to create a powerful and evocative representation of the subject matter. Overall, Dogon culture is a fascinating blend of tradition, spirituality, and artistic expression that has captured the imagination of people around the world. Determining the exact population of the Dogon people is a challenging task due to various factors that impact the accuracy of census data. These factors include the ongoing migrations of the Dogon people, the remote location of their settlements, and the limited access to reliable sources of information. Despite these challenges, current estimates suggest that the population of the Dogon people ranges between 200,000 to 300,000 individuals. However, it's worth noting that these estimates are subject to change as more accurate data becomes available. The origins of the Dogon people have been a subject of study and debate among researchers and anthropologists for decades. Migration theories propose that they moved from other areas, and their distinctive cultural practices developed as they adapted to the local environment. However, according to Dogon oral tradition, their ancestors are believed to have migrated to the Bandiagra escarpment region from a distant location called Dejeninke, or Gen. This migration narrative is an integral part of the Dogon oral history and reflects their understanding of their own origins. The town of Dejene is an actual historical and cultural center in Mali, situated on the Bani River. However, the town itself is not considered the original homeland of the Dogon. As for the etymology of the name, it is rooted in the Songhai language and is believed to mean ancient or long ago. Thus, the mention of Dejene in their oral tradition could be interpreted in various ways. It should be noted that many Dogon traditions assert that they have always inhabited the Bandiagra escarpment region in Mali. Archaeological excavations have uncovered artifacts and evidence of prehistoric human presence, but linking them specifically to the Dogon people is challenging. According to Master Neb Naba Lamusa Moradenabate, a renowned Kemetic Dogon priest, the rich and ancient traditions of the Dogon people have been preserved over time, tracing their roots back to ancient Egypt. He highlights similarities in specific cultural practices between the two groups, such as the use of masks and the belief in a complex cosmology. Scholars, such as Robert M. Schuck, also believe the origins of the Dogon people can be traced back to the ancient civilization of Egypt. Shock says these people were forced to flee from Egypt due to religious persecution and eventually settled in the West African region where they reside today. In terms of their civic and cultural traditions, they share many similarities with ancient Egypt. For instance, as noted by researcher Laird Scranton, the Dogon people have a tradition of founding districts and villages in pairs, which are called upper and lower. This practice is reminiscent of ancient Egypt. In addition, the Dogon people observe the same calendars as the ancient Egyptians, which is a testament to the longevity and resilience of these ancient cultural practices. Another striking similarity between the Dogon people and the ancient Egyptians is the mode of dress worn by their respective priests. The Dogon priests dress in a manner that is almost identical to that of the ancient Egyptian priests, which speaks to the deep cultural and historical connections between these two civilizations. Furthermore, the Dogon people still use many of the same agricultural methods that were practiced in ancient Egypt, such as crop rotation and irrigation techniques. It should be noted that a journey from Egypt to the Bandiagra escarpment would have involved a 2,500-kilometer journey crossing vast deserts and many potentially hazardous areas. It's difficult to imagine a large group of people embarking on such a perilous journey. Nevertheless, the Dogon are resilient people, and it remains an intriguing possibility. The Dogon people have long been of interest to researchers due to their unique astronomical knowledge. However, according to their own laws and traditions, 
they are forbidden from discussing their astronomical mysteries with outsiders. This knowledge is considered to be sacred and is meant only for their own tribal elders and initiates. It is not uncommon for tribal societies worldwide to have strict laws and traditions regarding the sharing of their knowledge with outsiders. In addition to the Dogon, there are also around 12 other tribes in the same area who have similar traditions of not disclosing their tribal knowledge to outsiders. These tribes claim to have acquired their knowledge from ancestral beings who came down from the sky and only impart it to those who are initiated into the tribe. This knowledge is often guarded and passed down through generations within the tribe, making it an essential aspect of their cultural identity and heritage. Undeadered by this, French anthropologist Marcel Griolet embarked on a series of expeditions to Mali in 1931, marking the beginning of his extensive fieldwork among the Dogon. Griolet lived among the Dogon people for an extended period, immersing himself in their daily lives, participating in their rituals, and developing relationships with members of the community. Germain Dieterlin, another distinguished French anthropologist, was a key member of Griolet's research team and began studying the Dogon in 1932. Dieterlin's contribution to the study of the Dogon was immense. She conducted in-depth interviews with Dogon elders, priests, and storytellers, documenting their myths, legends, and cosmological narratives. Over time, the pair developed a deep understanding of Dogon culture, and their work became an essential reference for scholars and researchers interested in the Dogon belief system. Griolet and Dieterlin's investigation spanned several decades, shedding light on aspects of Dogon culture that were previously little known or understood by the broader academic community. The majority of their comprehensive study was conducted primarily between 1946 and 1950 and culminated in the publication of their seminal work, Le Renard Pale, The Pale Fox. The title of the book is a reference to a key figure in Dogon mythology, the Pale Fox or Urugu. This major ethnographic work synthesized their findings and presented a detailed examination of Dogon cosmology and mythology. The book is considered a classic in the field of African anthropology. One of the most notable aspects of their research was their documentation of the Dogon's exceptional knowledge of the Sirius star system. Despite being an isolated tribe living in the heart of Africa, the Dogon possessed a wealth of knowledge about Sirius that was only confirmed by modern astronomy in the 20th century. This finding, often referred to as the Sirius Mystery, became a significant aspect of their research on Dogon cosmology and astronomy. Ian Ridpath, a well-known British author and broadcaster who specializes in astronomy and space, referred to the Sirius Mystery as perhaps the most puzzling of all ancient knowledge. Sirius has captivated human interest for thousands of years. The name, Sirius, has Greek origins, and it is translated as the glowing, or bright one. This name is fitting, considering Sirius is the brightest star visible in the night sky. Its cultural and symbolic significance in various ancient civilizations is a testament to its celestial beauty and enigmatic nature. In Hindu writings, this star was known as the Chieftain Star while other texts refer to it as Sukra, the rain god or rain star. It is often associated with the god Agni, the deity of fire, as well as the Murats, storm deities, and the Ashvans, twin horsemen deities. In ancient Egypt, Sirius was referred to as the Isis star, and was closely associated with the annual flooding of the Nile River. This event marked the beginning of the agricultural season and was critical to the prosperity of the civilization. As such, Sirius became a symbol of life and fertility, often depicted alongside the goddess Isis, who was believed to have a powerful connection to the star. The early Egyptians believed Sirius, Suthis, was the home of departed souls. This belief is also shared with the Dogon. Similarly, ancient Greeks recognized Sirius as a powerful celestial body and mentioned it in their literature. Homer's works referred to Sirius as the dog star which was associated with heat and drought. This link between Sirius and hot, dry weather led to the belief that the star was responsible for the scorching summer months. In ancient China, Sirius was recognized for its brightness and double star status, which made it a unique and fascinating object to observe. 
It was often linked to celestial wolves in Chinese constellations and was believed to have a powerful influence over earthly events. In Mesopotamia, cuneiform texts referenced Sirius as part of celestial omens and agricultural calendars. The star's position in the sky was used to predict the onset of the growing season and other important agricultural events. While all these references are fascinating in their own way, the Dogon's connection to Sirius goes far beyond simple cultural and symbolic significance. Dogon elders conveyed to Griolet and Dieterlin that Sirius was a binary star system composed of two stars, Sirius A and Sirius B. This information was particularly intriguing because, at the time of their research in the 1930s and 1940s, the binary nature of the Sirius star system was not widely known in Western astronomy. Sirius B was first observed through a telescope by American astronomer Alvin Graham Clark in 1862. The binary nature of the Sirius system was suspected due to irregularities in the motion of Sirius A. However, capturing detailed images of the faint companion star proved to be a challenging task for many years due to the brightness of Sirius A. It was not until 1970 that astronomers at the United States Naval Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, successfully photographed Sirius B using a 66-inch telescope. This observational breakthrough contributed to confirming the existence of Sirius B as a white dwarf and provided valuable data for understanding its properties, such as its size, temperature, and orbital dynamics within the Sirius binary system. Critics and skeptics have questioned the origin of the Dogon's astronomical knowledge, given the time lag between Alvin Graham Clark's observations and the Dogon revelations. However, one of the most intriguing aspects of the Dogon's knowledge of the Sirius star system, as conveyed to Marcel Griolet and Germain Dieterlin, is the level of detail they provided, especially concerning Sirius B, which they refer to as Po Tolo, or Sigatolo. They described Sirius B as having an elliptical orbit, which they refer to as egg shaped, with Sirius A located at one foci of the ellipse. This observation has puzzled Western scientists because Sirius B is not visible in the night sky. Yet, their description does indeed align with the orbital path of Sirius B, which is similar to an elongated or stretched out egg. According to the Dogon accounts, Sirius B takes approximately 50 years to complete one orbit around Sirius A. The exact time is 50.04 years with a small margin of error of plus or minus 0.09 years. Therefore, their assessment is remarkably accurate. Additionally, the Dogon correctly pointed out that Sirius B rotates on its own axis. It is important to remember that the Dogon claim this knowledge has been handed down through countless generations. But how could they have known about such phenomena hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago, long before modern telescopes and astronomical instruments were developed? The Dogon priests conveyed information about Sirius B describing it as incredibly heavy, comprising a super-dense metal called Sagala. They describe Sagala as heavier than all the iron on Earth. Is Sirius B a heavy star? Sirius B is classified as a white dwarf star. White dwarfs are remnants of stars that have exhausted their nuclear fuel and have collapsed under their own gravity, packing a considerable amount of mass into a small volume. This compression of mass means they are relatively small in size compared to their progenitor stars, but they are incredibly dense. In the case of Sirius B, astronomers have calculated that a single cubic meter of matter weighs about 20,000 tons. Using this as a basis, astronomers have estimated that Sirius B is roughly 333,000 times heavier than Earth. So, when the Dogon claim that Sagala is heavier than all the iron on Earth, they are correct. The color of a star is often related to its temperature, and white dwarfs typically have high surface temperatures, emitting a white or bluish white light. So, the Dogon's description of Sirius B as appearing white is also consistent with its classification as a white dwarf. The Indian astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar proposed that white dwarfs could exist as a class of stars in 1930. It is important to note that Chandrasekhar's theory was considered controversial at that time and was not widely accepted. However, his findings were later confirmed and are now commonly accepted in the field of astrophysics. Yet, 
The Dogon seem to have had knowledge of this phenomenon long before Chandrasekhar's theory was even proposed. The Sirius star system is reflected in much of the Dogon artwork. Some are extremely difficult to explain. For instance, a statue examined by Dieterlin portrays the star system with excellent clarity despite being at least 400 years old. This suggests they understood intricate details of the system long before the first sighting of Sirius B, long before any photographic evidence was captured, and even before the discovery of dwarf stars. This is one of the most fascinating things about the Dogon people. Their knowledge predates any scientific discovery or observation. Dogon astronomy also contains detailed information about the four largest moons of the planet Jupiter, which they call Sigi Tolo, Laban, Nal, and Wallachan. But that's not all. The Dogon people also had knowledge of Saturn's rings, which they depicted as a halo around the planet. They knew not only that the Earth was a sphere that rotated on its axis and orbited the Sun alongside other planets but also had an understanding of the vast universe beyond our solar system. What's particularly remarkable is that they described the Milky Way galaxy as a vast spiral shape, a concept that Western astronomers only began to understand in the early 1900s. Dogon astronomy has been verified by modern scientific discoveries, making it one of the most fascinating examples of ancient wisdom and knowledge. Dogon beliefs were passed down through generations of oral tradition. One of these beliefs describes a third star in the Sirius system, referred to as Emma Ya, or the Sorghum female. Emma Ya is considered the smallest but heaviest of the three stars. Its characterization as the Sorghum female connects it symbolically with fertility and agricultural aspects, emphasizing its role in sustaining life. We will come back to this third star later. Dogon knowledge of the heavens has been of interest to researchers and scholars and has sparked serious discussions and debates regarding the origins and transmission of this knowledge. According to Dogon mythology, their understanding of celestial bodies, including the Sirius star system and its components, Sirius A, Sirius B, and Sirius C, is said to have been imparted to them by extraterrestrial beings known as the Nomo. The name, Nomo, is derived from the Dogon language, and it is associated with the verb, to make one drink. In addition to being referred to as the Nomo, these beings are also known by various other titles, including, the Monitors. This term suggests the Nomo are seen as guardians or overseers. Interestingly, the Dogon people believe that the Nomo continue to watch over them from their home planet in the Sirius star system. The teachers, emphasizing their role as imparting knowledge to the Dogon people. They are believed to have instructed the Dogon people in cultural practices, rituals, social organization, and much more. The masters of the water. Many believe this term underscores their role as life givers. However, Water seems to have been essential to the Nomo's very existence. In Dogon beliefs, the Nomo's are described as amphibious beings with a hybrid appearance resembling both humans and aquatic creatures. In Dogon artworks, they are often depicted with fish like tails and humanoid upper bodies. According to the story, Ama, the supreme god in Dogon cosmology, used genetic engineering to create eight Nomo who were intended to serve as representatives of order and harmony on Earth. In some versions of the myth, Ama made four pairs of Nomo twins. These twins played various roles in the process of bringing order to the world. It is believed that they arrived on a large craft known as the Pelu Tolo, or Star of the Tenth Moon. Interestingly, around the same time that the craft was heading towards Earth, a new star appeared in the night sky. The story goes that the Pelu Tolo emerged from a fiery, thunderous cloud, creating a sense of awe and wonder among the Dogon people. As it got closer to Earth, it slowed and was suspended from the heavens by a sturdy copper chain, which allowed it to gracefully float down to the surface of the Earth. The Dogon tribe has a unique ritual where they construct a symbolic representation of this vessel in the form of a boat-shaped basket. This traditional practice is held in high regard and is considered an important part of their customs. The Dogon people believe that this representation of the Ark, left in every home, holds significant spiritual value and serves as an essential reminder of their cultural roots. 
The description of the Pelu Tolo and the fiery, thunderous cloud is quite vivid and evocative, suggesting that this was no ordinary event. The imagery aligns remarkably well with the arrival of a spaceship or aerial vehicle. One cannot help being reminded of Ezekiel's vision when examining this event. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verses 4 to 28, Ezekiel describes seeing a stormy wind coming from the north, a great cloud with fire flashing forth continually, and a bright light surrounding it. According to the tribe's description, Pelu Tolo was accompanied by a star encircled with a mesmerizing reddish color that continued to swirl around it for months. However, what is more intriguing is the tribe's claim that this object remained stationary relative to the other stars in the night sky. Now, it is a universally accepted fact that stars are constantly in motion and can never be stationary. Therefore, this object was not a star at all but something else entirely. Some speculate that it could have been a mothership or some form of advanced travel vessel, while others believe that it may have been an observation point for the Nomo's progress. The description of a star located far away, which appears to have a reddish color swirling around it, has sparked some speculation about the possibility of it being some kind of portal. Portals, which have long been suggested in science fiction as a means of traveling vast distances, are a theoretical concept that would allow for instant travel between two points in space. Interestingly, NASA is currently exploring this idea as a potential means of faster than light travel, although it remains purely theoretical at this point. Whatever the case may be, the arrival of the Nomo on Earth marked the beginning of their interactions with the Dogon people. They were thought to have possessed extraordinary powers and knowledge. In fact, it is said that they held all the knowledge of the universe and had existed for millions of years. According to the Dogon narrative, when the Nomo first arrived on Earth, they constructed a large reservoir and promptly submerged themselves in its waters. This action is widely interpreted as a sign that the Nomo require an aquatic environment to survive and thrive. It is also believed that they possessed a deep understanding of the mysteries of water and could use this knowledge to heal and benefit humanity. After the landing, the vessel was also dragged to the reservoir until it floated. Each morning, the Nomo would emerge from this vessel and swim across the lake to the shores, where they would preach to the people who had gathered in large numbers to hear their wisdom. This led to significant advancements in various areas. For example, the Dogon attribute much of their agricultural proficiency to the teachings of the Nomo, who introduced them to different techniques and practices related to farming and cultivation. The Dogon attribute their advanced understanding of celestial objects and their movements to the teachings of the Nomo. This knowledge is deeply ingrained in the Dogon's culture and traditions and continues to shape their way of life to this day. The topic at hand is highly intriguing for individuals who have an interest in the study of ancient deities. Throughout history, there have been numerous examples of fish-like or aquatic beings being regarded as cultural bearers across different civilizations. These beings are often believed to have brought knowledge, wisdom, and teachings to humanity, thus playing a significant role in shaping the beliefs and practices of various societies. Numerous references exist in oral traditions, drawings, and cuneiform tablets to beings that appeared human-like but with fish skin running down their bodies. These creatures have been observed in multiple ancient civilizations, including Sumer, Babylonia, Akkadia, and Egypt, among others. The fact that such similar entities have been documented across various cultures and periods raises fascinating questions about the potential interconnectivity of these ancient societies and their beliefs. These fish-like people were believed to have possessed immense wisdom, and their teachings were instrumental in shaping the culture and beliefs of early civilizations. One prominent figure associated with fish-like attributes in mythology is the god Ea, also known as Enki. Ea is considered one of the principal deities in the Mesopotamian pantheon, particularly in Sumerian and Babylonian traditions. In some representations, Ea is shown with a lower body resembling that of a fish and the upper body and head of a human. He is associated with subterranean freshwater sources, such as the Apsu, or Abza, which is a primordial freshwater abyss. Ea is often depicted as a god of wisdom, freshwater, and magic. The earliest references to Ea and similar deities with fish-like characteristics can be found in Sumerian texts from the early dynastic period, 
circa 2900 to 2350 BC. These texts laid the foundation for later Babylonian mythology, and the cultural and religious influence of Ea extended into the Babylonian and Assyrian periods. According to Babylonian mythology, the fish people are known as Anadodi, which means repulsive. Interestingly, these creatures were also described as horrid looking by the Dogon tribe. Despite their unattractive appearance, the Babylonians recognized the significant impact of these individuals and learned crucial aspects of civilization from them. Barosis was a Babylonian priest and historian who lived in the 3rd century BC. His work, known as the Babyloniaca, is a history of Babylon that has survived in fragments. Barosis is known for providing an account of a fish like being named Oans, who emerged from the Persian Gulf long before his era. The Babylonians considered Oans a culture hero who brought knowledge and wisdom to humanity. Oans is also described as having the lower body of a fish and the upper body of a human. As strange as it sounds, Oans is also sometimes portrayed as emerging from or enclosed within the body of a fish. According to historical records, Oans would emerge from the sea every day and spend time among humans, teaching and sharing his wisdom, including writing, sciences, and the arts. At night, he would dive back into the Persian Gulf and return to his underwater palace. Interestingly, the two-horned mitre that is worn by the Pope originally represented Dagon, a deity worshipped by the Philistines. Like Oans and Enki, he too, is depicted as a hybrid being with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a fish. Dagon held significance as a god associated with agriculture, fertility, and the sea. Mentions of Dagon are found in the biblical texts, notably in the context of interactions between the Philistines and the Israelites. While Dagon is not typically described as a teacher in the traditional sense, since he is a god, he is often associated with bestowing knowledge, wisdom, or specific skills upon humanity. In Hindu mythology, the first avatar of Lord Vishnu is known as Matsya avatar. This avatar is depicted as a fish with a human-like upper body. According to Indian texts, Lord Vishnu took this form to save humanity and other life forms from a great flood that was about to destroy the world. This flood was sent by a demon named Hayagriva, who had stolen the Vedas, the holy scriptures of Hinduism. Lord Vishnu's Matsya avatar rescued the Vedas and other divine knowledge and also saved the first man, Manu, and all the animals and plants by taking them on a boat. The story emphasizes the importance of preserving sacred teachings and knowledge for the benefit of humanity. Apart from Matsya avatar, there is another fish-like deity in Hindu mythology known as Varuna. Varuna is an ancient Vedic deity who is sometimes depicted with a human upper body and the lower body of a fish or as a fish-like deity. Varuna is considered the lord of the oceans, and he controls the water and the tides. In Hinduism, water is regarded as a symbol of purity, and Varuna is also associated with purity and righteousness. While Varuna may not be a direct teacher in terms of instructing individuals, his association with cosmic order, moral law, and judgment implies a role in guiding individuals toward righteous living. Similarly, in the Greek mythology, there are references to fish-bodied beings, particularly on the island of Rhodes. These beings were known as Telshines, and were believed to be culture-bearing gods who introduced certain arts and teachings that were beneficial for humanity. According to the Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, the Telshines were responsible for discovering various arts and introducing other teachings that were incredibly beneficial for society. In Chinese mythology, their civilization was also founded by beings with a human head and a fishtail. This entity was named Fuxi and is often depicted as both male and female. According to tradition, Fuxi's existence dates back to 3322 BC which is a similar timeline to other ancient civilizations such as Sumer and Egypt. What is fascinating about these accounts is that many of these cultures were said to have had no contact with each other. In fact, in some cases, they were separated by vast bodies of water. This raises intriguing questions about the origin of these beliefs. Is it possible that the same entity appeared at different locations, or perhaps a group of entities came here and imparted their teachings at various locations across the globe? 
Before the Nomo left Earth, they performed a sacred ritual that has been passed down through generations. As part of this ritual, the Nomo chose one of their own and crucified him. The Nomo divided the body among men to provide them with sustenance. As the universe had drunk of his body, the Nomo also made men drink. The Nomo took the lower jaw of their creature and, through some incredible act of magic, brought the entire creature back to life. Through this ritual, the Nomo taught the Dogon people that there is no death and that behind every death, there shall be a resurrection. Carl Sagan, the renowned American astronomer, astrophysicist, and science communicator, discussed the Dogon people and their knowledge of the Sirius star system in his book, Broca's Brain. In Broca's Brain, published in 1974, Sagan suggested an alternative explanation for how the Dogon might have obtained this information. He proposed the idea that the Dogon might have received knowledge of Sirius from modern sources, possibly through contact with European explorers, missionaries, or anthropologists. It is worth noting that prior to Marcel Griolet's arrival, there had already been discussions in the scientific press during the late 1920s regarding the Sirius star system. Additionally, historical records indicate that the University of Timbuktu has been in existence since the 16th century, suggesting a long-standing tradition of knowledge and scholarship in the region. Given these historical circumstances, is it possible that the Dogon's knowledge of the Sirius system could have been influenced by these sources rather than solely based on their own traditions? Sagan's theory might seem plausible at first glance. However, there are some points that he should have considered. For instance, the 400-year-old artifact depicting the Sirius configuration. This would mean that any talk of Westerners contaminating the Dogon traditions becomes irrelevant as the Dogon's knowledge of the Sirius system was already well established long before the arrival of Western explorers. Additionally, Dogon religious ceremonies, which revolve around the cycle of Sirius A and B, can be traced back to at least the 13th century, suggesting that their knowledge of the star system has been passed down for generations. Knowledge of the Sirius system is not only reflected in their sand drawings but also in their sacred architecture and ancient rituals. In fact, the Dogon's understanding of Sirius is so extensive that it can be seen in carvings and patterns that date back hundreds, if not thousands, of years. This raises important questions about how we view isolated tribes. Rather than dismissing them as primitive and outdated, perhaps it is time we started listening to them more closely. The knowledge and wisdom that they have accumulated over generations could provide us with valuable insights into the universe and how we can better understand it. Robert Temple, in his book, The Serious Mystery, presented a different perspective than Sagan. According to Temple, the French anthropologists Griolet and Dieterlin were convinced that the tribe possessed knowledge about Sirius B that could not have been obtained through conventional means. Temple argues that the density of Sirius B was not discovered until 1930. This leaves only a narrow window of time during which Western amateur astronomers could have traveled to Mali and imparted this knowledge to the Dogon people. Not only that, their creation myth goes into detail on Sirius A, Sirius B, and Sirius C. Now, are we really expected to believe that Western astronomers traveled to Mali and gave this information to the Dogon? Then, the Dogon hastily crafted this intricate and highly detailed story around it. It should also be noted that although the density of white dwarf stars such as Sirius B was discovered in 1930, as mentioned earlier, it was not widely accepted until later. Furthermore, while the Dogon possessed an impressive knowledge of astronomy, they only recognized the existence of five planets in our solar system, up to and including Saturn. It is quite reasonable to assume that if Western astronomers had imparted their advanced astronomical knowledge to the Dogon, they would have informed them about the existence of planets such as Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. After all, these planets have been known to astronomers for a long time. Temple also argued that the Dogon understanding of Sirius was too accurate and detailed to be explained solely by cultural transmission from Europeans. Temple proposed a scenario in which ancient astronauts or extraterrestrial visitors did indeed impart advanced astronomical knowledge to select human cultures, and this knowledge was subsequently passed down through generations. He drew connections between Dogon beliefs and Egyptian mythology, 
suggesting a cultural and historical continuity that included extraterrestrial influence. In a recent article, Temple made some quite intriguing revelations about his experience after the release of his book. In the article, he mentioned how he was attacked by various government entities for the sensitive information he had revealed in his book. However, what made these attacks even more noteworthy was the fact that some of these entities were unhappy that he had released the information before the public was ready to hear it. Interestingly enough, some of these attacks even came from NASA, a revelation that has left many people wondering what other secrets NASA might be keeping from the general public. Renowned ufologist Thomas E. Bullard has extensively studied the Dogon people's ancient traditions and beliefs. According to Bullard, this knowledge is unique and unparalleled in any other known human culture and is perhaps the best evidence to date of paleocontact. If there was contact between ancient astronaut visitors, traces of it should have been left behind in the form of shared myths and legends. Interestingly, this is the case. Similar supernatural beings are found in the mythologies of several cultures, including the Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, Mayans, Incas, Sumerians, and many more. This suggests a potential connection between these groups. Could that connection really be of the ancient astronaut kind? It's very possible. Throughout human history, there have been numerous accounts and depictions of flying machines and beings from other worlds. Among these, the ancient Sumerian, Egyptian, and Indian texts stand out, as they contain numerous references to the presence of powerful, godlike beings on Earth in the distant past. These texts describe these beings as possessing advanced knowledge and technology, which enabled them to travel through the skies in flying vehicles and perform miraculous feats. Since the technology being described in these stories seems to surpass what we would expect to find in ancient cultures, this could easily be interpreted as visitations from ancient astronauts. A scientific fact that could either prove or disprove these claims is the existence of Sirius C, the third star in the Sirius star system. It is believed to be in a complex orbital dance with Sirius A and Sirius B. According to their oral traditions, the Dogon have known about the existence of a third star in the system for centuries. The claim has long been dismissed as mere superstition by the scientific community. However, in 1995, two French astronomers, Daniel Benest and J. L. Duvent, conducted research on the Sirius system and presented some intriguing findings. According to their data, certain anomalies in the system could not be explained by the presence of only two stars. To account for these irregularities, they hypothesized that there might be a third, smaller star in the system that was yet to be discovered. Furthermore, in 2001, researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, conducted a study on the Sirius system. Their findings suggested that the inner region of the system could contain a short orbit companion star which has since been dubbed Sirius C. The presence of this companion star could explain the suspected cyclic residual orbital variations observed in the system. Further studies and observations will be required to shed more light on the inner workings of the Sirius system and the potential role of Sirius C in its dynamics. The discovery of this star would have significant implications not just for the scientific community but for the history of our planet since it would prove the claims made by the Dogon. All debate about where this knowledge came from would be settled. No longer would there be debates about gods coming from the skies? It would be a historical fact. It is fascinating to consider that all ancient myths could be based on fragments of actual history. This theory has been proposed by alternative thinkers for decades, and if valid, it would be a startling revelation. As our space technology continues to improve, it is within the realm of possibility that we may discover evidence that supports this theory. The possibility of encountering an extraterrestrial civilization in the near future is an exciting prospect. We may even meet the very people who came to this planet eons ago and learn about their history and culture. The advancements in space exploration have opened up a whole new world of possibilities, and it is an exciting time to be alive. The Dogon people hold a belief that the Noma will return to Earth one day, not in their original form but in human form, to avoid frightening people. This belief has been passed down from generation to generation and continues to be an essential aspect of their cultural and religious traditions. Interestingly, 
The Dogon described the sound that the Nomo made when they visited Earth as a deep, low-pitched rumble that echoed across the landscape. This sound is recreated by a traditional instrument called a bull roarer, which is spun around on a rope to produce a whirring noise. What's really strange is that some people in recent years have reported hearing similar sounds coming from the sky. These mysterious noises have been heard all over the world and have been described as everything from a trumpet blast to a roaring jet engine. Some people even claim that the sounds are accompanied by strange atmospheric phenomena, like bright lights or strange clouds. This has led some to speculate that the Nomo's return could be imminent, as predicted by the Dogon prophecy. Perhaps these strange sounds are a sign that the Nomo are preparing to come back to Earth to help us in our time of need. It is worth mentioning that there are people who hold the belief that the Nomo are not extraterrestrial beings as traditionally understood, but rather higher dimensional entities such as demons and angels. This perspective is based on the idea that Nomo are capable of transcending the limitations of our physical reality and operating on a more abstract, spiritual plane. Interestingly, the underlying principles of quantum mechanics suggest that there may be multiple dimensions beyond our own, each with its own unique properties and inhabitants. While the existence of such beings remains largely theoretical, ongoing research and exploration in this area could eventually lead to new discoveries and a deeper understanding of the nature of reality itself. If you are interested in delving deeper into the fascinating world of Dogon religious beliefs, Conversations with Ogotemeli, an introduction to Dogon religious ideas, by Marcel Griolet and Germain Dieterlin could be an excellent starting point. This book, first published in 1948, is based on the conversations between the authors and Ogotemeli, a respected elder within the Dogon community who was recognized as a custodian of traditional knowledge. He was considered a teacher and repository of the oral traditions, religious ideas, and cosmology of the Dogon people. The book offers a comprehensive exploration of Dogon cosmology, including their understanding of the universe, celestial bodies, and the forces that shape their worldview. Final words about the Dogon In recent times, the Dogon people have been impacted by the forces of modernization and globalization. With increased contact with the outside world, their traditional way of life has undergone significant changes. Despite these challenges, there are still many Dogon communities who continue to maintain their traditional practices and preserve their cultural heritage. From their unique architecture and rock paintings to their intricate masks and elaborate dances, the Dogon people have a rich cultural legacy that they are proud to share with the world. By keeping their traditions alive, they ensure that their history and way of life will be passed down to future generations. Hey there! A quick message. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it interesting and would like to stay updated with our latest content, please consider subscribing to our channel. We have an exciting collection of 98 books that we will be uploading soon, so take advantage of the opportunity to expand your knowledge and stay entertained. Thank you for your support. In the upcoming uploads, you can expect to delve deeper into the mysteries of the ancient world. Some of the fascinating topics that we will be covering include the Great Pyramid of Giza, which continues to amaze us with its engineering marvels. We will also explore the actual age of Egypt, which has been a subject of great debate among historians and archaeologists for centuries. Furthermore, we will discuss the gods of Samaria, one of the earliest known civilizations that flourished in Mesopotamia. We will also take a deep dive into the fascinating world of submerged kingdoms, which have been discovered in various parts of the world and offer a glimpse into the past. We will explore the concept of advanced civilizations and the many theories that surround this topic. From the ancient city of Mohenjo-Daro in the Indus Valley to the mysterious ruins of Tiahuanaco in Bolivia, we will examine the evidence and try to unravel the secrets of these enigmatic societies.